completely honest with you, I wasn't really expecting to be starting off this video with a didgeridoo either, but Australian relatives came round yesterday and I ended up with one and I thought I'd show you because it it's got a salty on one side and a sardinette turtle on the other so you might be interested, but anyway. Now that I've hopefully got your attention, it is time to start the video. So in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the entire reptile room and taking a look at all of the reptiles in it and all of their setups and what's been going on with them for the past month. Now this time round, we're going to sort of rattle through things relatively quickly because I have been doing some polls and stuff in the community tab, which you can check out on my channel um, and it would help me out if you were to sort of participate in that. But I've been doing some polls on that and I do want to talk about the results in the end of this video as well as with some future plans that I've got. But for now, we're going to take a look at the reptiles. Now for a bit of a throwback, we are going to do things in the old order, so we are going to start off with Speckles the Leopard Gecko this time. Now to give you a quick overview of his setup, this is a 3x2x2 um, Reptihome Medium Maxi, lit with an Arcadia Pro T5 Shade Dweller Unit, a 2 foot white Python LED kit and it's also got a DP projector for the heating. Now we did set this up, um, this entire setup, um, like a couple of months ago, and if you want to check out that video, I'll throw a card up now. But um, you may recall me saying that Speckles had chosen this hide, um, which he was going to stay in, and I predicted that he would stay in there for about six months because he doesn't like new environments, and I thought the rest of this setup wouldn't really get used until he'd settled in. But um, you can actually just see his tail there. I'll try and show you him better in a bit, like. But um, he started branching out a bit earlier than I thought. And most days I do find him in his cold side hide at least once a day. Perhaps the only um, sort of change here. Um, I'm not sure if I talked about this last month or if I'd done it yet but forgot to mention it. But I'll mention it now anyway. And that is that, um, I do have some more stones in here. You can see some little pebbles there, one just in front of that plant. A couple up the front and a couple back here. And it does just sort of make it look a bit more authentic. So I will just take you in to see him. I have got the light on on my camera just now. So hopefully you can see in there that Speckles is actually there. Um, you can just about see his underbelly. I don't really want to disturb him. Um, last week's video, if you want to see Speckles, was really good for that because we fed him. And he was really the star of that video because I was talking about training your reptiles to respond to sounds when it's feeding time. And he is really well trained and he just absolutely shot out of his hide there. So if you want to see him, then I'll leave a card for that as well. But there's not really much to talk about with Speckles and I do have lots to talk about today. So let's move on. So next up, why don't we take a look at Char the Bearded Dragon. Now Char is doing really, really well now and I am glad to say that he's both getting tamer every single day and he is also starting to have more and more of a look at his veg. He usually picks a couple of pieces off it every day or he eats the entire bowl, which is good considering that he never used to eat any of it, um, any of it at all, so I am really happy with that. Now Char's enclosure has undergone a little bit of a change since last time. As you can tell, um, the plant on the left is like completely dead now, so I am going to get rid of that. Um, but the main thing I want to talk about is that his heating setup has changed because his little 50 watt halogen bulb that he had blew um, and I decided to replace it with a 100 watt one so that instead of using the ceramic heat emitter that was 250 watts to bump up the heating and get the desired temperatures, um, if I had the higher wattage halogen bulb then I could install a deep heat projector. Now I've done an entire video about DP projectors and halogen bulbs and why they're the best heating, particularly for bearded dragons um, in the past, but um, I hadn't been able to do that because the power of it just wasn't enough to achieve the temperatures that you need for them in this room which is unheated, but now that I've got the stronger halogen I can do that and I do honestly think that there's been a change already even though it's only been like 
a week or something because he is just absolutely charging at food now. I mean, he was doing it anyway, but it's just absolutely amazing. But whatever the case, in a couple of weeks, I'll probably report back and see how he's doing with it. Now then, bed the corn slink section in this video is going to be dead dead short because I made an entire episode on my channel a while ago um, within the past month on how he was doing and we fed him and took him in the garden and I did some things with his setup. So I'm not going to bore you with telling you all that again. I will just talk about the important bits that I've been changing. Now the biggest thing really with Red is that with the weather picking up, I mean it's not now, I don't know if you can hear the rain, but the weather has been getting better and the pressure I assume has been changing in the atmosphere and he must be able to sense that because he is just so much more active now and really quite personable. Um, throughout the winter and like the autumn and stuff he just hides 24-7 but now he's coming out um, and when like you open the door he comes and has a look and he tries to come out and it is really fun interacting with him. So yeah. You can also probably tell that the pothos cuttings that I put in there were sort of destroyed in not very long. But they're still green and some of them did have roots on. So fingers crossed they might be able to pull through. But anyway, that is red. So then, having talked about everybody out in the main reptile room, so Char, Red and Speckles, who you probably can't see in the screen, um, let's go and take a look at the Viviria in the other room. Just to mix things up a bit, let's start off with Splat the Cresty. Now, as you can see by his setup, it is doing really well because what I've been doing recently is actually um, moving his 13 watt Jungle Dawn LED lamp and um, moving it around the enclosure so that the different plants get a go at the light, if you like, um, sort of periodically. Because really, the sort of the beam is very powerful, but it just sort of comes straight down out the lamp and the plants that aren't under it don't really get the benefit. So I've been moving it about and as you can see in particular the Wondering Dew cutting I've got is doing really well with that. Um, I have also introduced some different cuttings, um, I've got some different coloured pathos and also some pilea that I've nicked out of another enclosure and I'm hoping they take. I'd say the only downside to moving the jungle dawn around now is that the Neeragelia bromeliads just aren't blushing very well because they really do need high light to look look the best and if they haven't got that at all times then they just aren't as good but they're still all right. Now Splat the Cresty himself is just the same as ever Um, again as I've said in pretty much every video with him Um, I don't hold my Cresty Gecko because he does not like it at all. In, like When he was younger and I was trying to tame him and stuff, he would just constantly shake his tail like he was going to drop it and squeak and run off. And it just wasn't fair on him, so I'll leave him alone now. Um, I'm just an example of that because, you know, I see him and I see other people holding theirs and I kind of want to. But just for an example, um, the other week he did actually jump on the doors of his enclosure and I just went to open them to get him off because I was trying to feed him. And he went absolutely nuts the moment I touched the door. And I honestly thought he was going to shed his tail and that was going to be the end of my tail crested gecko. But um, no, he didn't luckily. But it was just sort of a reminder that he really doesn't like it. So he is definitely a look but don't touch pet. Aside from that though, he is doing perfectly fine. What are you looking at? So the last of the reptiles to talk about are also the newest reptiles and they are the Lyme Day Geckos and Felsuma lineata subspecies Bombatocensis. Now these two are doing really well. Um, I've changed up the heating and lighting recently because the blue, um, the daylight blue bulb that was from ZoomEd I think, um, well it was, um, that blue. So I decided to get a halogen bulb instead, a nano halogen. Um, because the female of the pair actually had like this brown mark on her back. I wasn't sure if it was from them scrapping. You'll remember they were fighting at first. Not anymore. It's perfectly fine. Um, 
but I got in touch with John Courtney Smith from Arcadia about it because I was worried and he thought that it could have been dermal burn so basically where you've got like an improper heat source um, and it like burns the skin and um, I'll make an entire video about that I think because it really does deserve it and not enough people sort of recognize it um, but Basically, she could possibly have been burnt and having the halogen is going to stop that. But whatever the case, the pair of these geckos do shed really quite often. They both shed at least twice that I've seen and they eat the shed, so we could have been shedding even more. So that burn is completely healed now and I've got the halogen on and it's not come back. So whatever it was, it seems to have cured it. Now, on the note of shedding and skin and stuff, the colours of these two geckos really have changed quite a lot, with the male becoming brighter and more colourful, and here's the more dominant one, like the speckles down his back are getting redder and redder all the time, and he's getting like a sort of iridescent blue sheen down his tail and his legs, which I'm hoping as he matures further and further that that will pick up, because some of the pictures you see on the internet where they were the fully blue were just, wow. <laughs> But then the female is becoming a sort of a drabber colour, I want to say, but it's still really nice, like a sort of emerald green and bronze, and the spots on her back are sort of a reddish brown. You can also see that she does have a bit of stuck shed on her leg, but as they shed so often, I'm hoping that with the next shed, that'll just peel off. One thing I will say with this enclosure though, is that I am getting loads and loads and loads of condensation on the front pane. Now this vivarium from DMS Viveria is absolutely fantastic and it's got like the vent running along the front that should allow for like an air circulation. If like this is the front of the viv here and this is the top, the vent's like along here so it lets the air come through and then it will go out the top there. But because I've put so many plants in a not very big enclosure, I think it's just like too humid. Um, now I did get in contact with Dale from DMS Viveria about this, and he was saying that what I could do to try and like mitigate the effects of this is get like a heat cable and um, wrap it round a garden cane or something and put it underneath the front vent, so it'll create sort of more rapid airflow and it should hopefully clear the front. So I am going to try that and hopefully it'll solve the issue. Anyway guys, like I say, I don't want to talk for too long today because I do have some other stuff to talk about and that is what we are going to get into right now. So if you've been checking out my community tab recently, you will see that I have been making more frequent posts on there. Um, I do hope you are enjoying the pictures I'm putting up by the way, but the thing I really want to address is a poll I put up um, a while ago which was about what you want to see on this channel the most. Now, I will talk about the clear winner in a second, that's really what I want to get onto. But aside from the clear winner of that poll, um, Bioactive Basics did come really high up. So from now on, I am going to ensure that sort of, well, I do a video every week. So every month, I am going to make sure that I do at least one Bioactive Basics video. So that will be one quarter of the videos I upload, which I think is fair because, you know, I've got to balance things. I can't just do one thing all the time. But if you like the sound of that, then do consider subscribing. Like I say, the thing I want to talk about is that people voted the most for wanting to see me get new reptiles and do new vivarium builds. Now, I do have plans um, to get more reptiles, but I am very limited on space and potentially will be limited on time soon because, you know, I may as well just tell you, I'm 16 um, and in sixth form at the minute doing A-levels, so in like, ne by the end of next summer, I'll have finished that and what I do then, I cannot predict whether I go to uni or do something else, whatever, doesn't really matter to you guys. But the point is, I'm not going to have as much time on my hands to look after reptiles. And so I don't want to make the commitment of getting things that need lots of care 24-7 that I might not be able to, like, give them. So whilst it would sort of be fun to just get loads of reptiles now and just go, 
get like whichever one's sort of one I keep because I am sort of getting more confident in the hobby having been in it for five years that I can keep more sort of sort of advanced and needy species but if I need like my parents to step in and look after them for some time then that's just not going to work out so getting more reptiles really is quite a big decision for me and more on the topic of the reptiles themselves as you will tell for all of my animals, I prefer to give them like large, as large enclosures as I can sort of fit them in, um, like more than just the minimum size, so that they can really enjoy their lives and have more things to do in their enclosures, and also to give them the best technology I can, like halogen lights instead of just cheap incandescent ones, and UVB and all that stuff. So. It really is, to be honest, quite expensive to set like up just one enclosure for one reptile and it does take up a lot of space, so again, what I get is a really big decision. Saying that though, the reptile room isn't complete and there is a great big gap up behind me that's seven feet long, two feet deep, and I've got about two and a half feet of space like upwards to deal with, um, and I am planning over the sort of towards next summer to have filled that with three more vivaria. Um, I am pretty certain I already know what's going to go in them. Um, I've got, I'm planning on doing one four by two foot by two foot and then two three feet by one foot three and one foot three vivaria on top of each other. So two smaller reptiles and one larger reptile. And perhaps the thing that you guys that voted for that particular thing in the poll will be most interested in is that I do have lots of spare equipment available at the minute. So um, for anybody who remembers, Red the Corn Snakes thermostat did go um, a while ago and it was a big long story but basically I've actually got it back now and I'm testing it and it seems to be working just fine. So I've got a spare digital dimming thermostat to use um, and then I've got spare vivaria that aren't like permanent homes but will be great for quarantine systems um, and then I've got spare substrates um, and some spare decorations and stuff so at the minute there really isn't much holding me back from getting like another reptile and then sort of quarantining it for six months and doing the full bioactive stuff once it's been fully quarantined. Again though, like I said in last in the last reptile room tour, I do have quite a lot of upgrades planned um, for all these guys. So whether I do end up getting another reptile in like a month or so, mm, might happen, might not happen. But if you want to see, you'll have to subscribe to find out. Anyway guys, I do hope that you understand those sort of decisions because there is sort of like a big atmosphere of, well, people call it pet tube, don't they? Um, at the minute where people just get like loads of, somebody like gets given loads of land and then they buy like 300,000 lizards and however many hundred thousand snakes they want, put them all in drawers and then yank them out and show them like, ooh, look what I've got. But that is not really something that I want to be a part of and I do hope that you understand that. So then, that does bring us to the end of this video, um, I do really hope that you enjoyed it um, and if you would like to see more then do check me out next week because at the minute I am doing weekly uploads and have been doing so without fail for quite some time. But anyway, as I say, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!